just moments after leaving the ground at Charlotte, North Carolina. The small commuter plane loses all control and crashes into a nearby airport hangar. The cause of the accident would raise uncomfortable questions with regards to flying on smaller planes. The plane in question has a remarkable safety record. The manufacturer's reputation of aircraft quality is second to none. The plane pitched to an extreme angle just seconds after leaving the runway. The pilots could not push the nose of the plane down. An aerodynamic stall causes the plane to lose lift where it then fell to the ground, killing 21 people in the accident. What caused Air Midwest Flight 5481 to crash just moments after leaving the runway? The American aviator Walter Herschel Beach founded the Beach Aircraft Company, later rebranded as Beechcraft in 1932. The company based out of Wichita, Kansas, has been responsible for producing all kinds of aeroplanes. Specializing in general aviation, the expertise of the company found themselves contributing to the American war effort in World War II. Beechcraft specialized in propeller planes. The long history of the company led them to perfecting their methods and technologies in their small corner of the aviation market. As far as general aviation goes, they were considered to be among the big three in the United States, along with Cessna and Piper. In the 1960s, Beechcraft first launched their King Air line of planes. The King Air series has long since proven to stand the test of time, being one of the most reliable planes ever built. Beechcraft still produced this plane to this day with modern technology and is loved by its pilots. Their experience in producing these twin-engine turboprops had led Beechcraft to joining the commercial aviation market with manufacturing small commuter planes for regional airlines. Some airlines instead even opting for the King Air series because they were so reliable. Once Beechcraft developed their newer Super King Air, they then produced a new modern commuter turboprop creating the 1900 series. Introduced in 1984, the Beechcraft 1900 series was a sleek high-performance turboprop aeroplane. The final iteration of this series was the Beechcraft 1900D. The cabin on board this plane was expanded to allow the passengers to stand upright, which made for a more comfortable flying experience. The plane has a very good safety record with over 600 of these planes produced across the whole series, many of which flew as part of the commuter fleets for major US air carriers. In the United States, especially from the 1980s onwards and even to this day, it is common for major US airlines to have ties with smaller airlines, SkyWest being one of the most prolific, having planes painted in the liveries of United, Delta, American Eagle and Alaska Airlines, operating planes on their behalf. Air Midwest was another one of these regional carriers. If you live in the US, you may think that you've not ever seen an Air Midwest plane, as a lot of their planes were painted in the livery of US Airways throughout its history. Prior to 2015, US Airways was a major carrier in the United States before it was merged into American Airlines. They had a large hub operation out of Charlotte Douglas Airport in North Carolina, and as such, so did Air Midwest have commuter operations. This southeastern corner of the United States is a popular area for hub operations for passenger and cargo carriers alike, Delta operating their hub out of what is currently the world's busiest airport in Atlanta, Georgia. Likewise, FedEx operate their massive cargo operation out of Memphis, Tennessee. Having a hub like this allows for dozens of very short flights between towns and counties, ideal for a plane like the Beach 1900. Hubs in this region allow for a timeless schedule when transferring passengers through connections. It allows people to travel more efficiently using this type of hub model. In the 2000s, Air Midwest operated their Beach 1900Ds to several small towns in and around this area. On January 8, 2003, Air Midwest operating as US Airways Express Flight 5481 was a scheduled Beach 1900D flight to Greenville Spartanburg Airport, just 75 miles away, only 30 minutes flying time. Before we talk about the accident itself as it happened on the day, we need to talk about the two points of note in the investigation of the crash. The official investigation found two primary causes of the accident. The first point of note to the investigators was the plane's control services. Of particular interest was the plane's elevator or horizontal stabilizer, which controls the pitch of the plane. 
On the Beach 1900, the control surfaces are controlled with a series of cables and wiring much like a lot of other smaller planes. This particular plane had recently been taken in for maintenance two nights prior to the accident flight. The plane underwent a Detail 6 maintenance check, or D6 for short. At the time, the Beechcraft company was owned by another company, Raytheon, who provided, according to the official report, mechanics, quality assurance, and a site manager. Many of the mechanics at work in maintenance had not been working there for long, some having less than eight weeks experience with the company, with none of the mechanics having completed their training for the D6 check. During this maintenance check, one mechanic had inspected the tension on the elevator control cables for any discrepancies. The mechanic had determined that the tension on the elevator cables was below average and needed adjustment. This work was carried out according to the records, however the maintenance had actually modified the elevator system so that its range of movement did not fall in line with the plane's standards. Prior to the maintenance, almost the full range of elevator movement was available to the fly crew, However, downward travel on the elevator was not of full range. The A and D, or airplane nose down angle, needed as specified in the plane's specifications should be between 14 and 15 degrees. However, this was modified in maintenance so that only 4 to 7 degrees of A and D was available. A total of 9 steps was skipped in this maintenance check, which would have exposed the lack of mobility in the plane's elevator system. This work was done two nights before the day of the accident flight. On January 7, 2003, the day before the crash, the accident plane performed six flights as per its schedule. The pilots flying the plane that day report everything being normal on the plane and being in good working order. This now takes us over to the second point of note in this incident. Investigators after the crash of Flight 5481 quickly discovered that ground crews reported that some of the cargo that was being loaded onto the plane was considerably heavy. The question was then raised, was this plane over the maximum takeoff weight limit? In this video, we will be using the United States Imperial Unit of Weight Measurement, pounds, as it was the unit used by the crew of the flight. There will however be conversions in brackets in kilograms. Weight especially on smaller aircraft, needs to be carefully calculated. Every plane has a certified maximum takeoff weight. On the Beechcraft 1900D, this weight is 17,120 pounds, and the total calculated weight as done by the flight crew during the pre-flight checks was 17,018 pounds. Aside from a small error of 10 pounds, which brings the actual calculated weight to 17,028 pounds, this calculation was performed correctly, However, this does not give you the full picture. There were previously a total of 9 flights prior to the flight of 5481 with similar load amounts in the days leading up to the accident. When adjusted for two particularly heavy bags that the ramp agent specified that was of note, and the corrections to one passenger's bag which was weighed incorrectly, the new revised weight of the plane comes to 17,078 pounds, still within the maximum limit for the plane. Attention should now be redirected from the cargo on board the plane to the passengers. The Beechcraft 1900 can hold a maximum of 19 passengers. On flight 5481, every seat was filled with a total of 19 passengers and 2 crew members for a total of 21 people on board. For their calculations, the flight crew used an average weight for each passenger. The use of an average weight brings up the idea that not every passenger is going to weigh the same amount. Some may weigh more, and some less. The use of an average weight would imply that over the entire passenger manifest, the average weight should come to a similar average. In 2003, this average weight for a passenger that was used in the calculations was 175 pounds, although this was subject to seasonal changes, where in the summer the average would be reduced to 170 pounds. The question now being, did the passengers on board on average weigh more than expected? The crash of Flight 5481 promptly raised concerns about the use of average weights in the industry that a post-accident average weight survey was carried out. A notice was served to US airlines that operated small commuter planes like the Beach 1900 to determine whether other operators were using similar averages. Out of a total of 22 operators, 15 used average weights while 7 had programs in place to determine more accurate or actual weights of passengers. 
Each of the 15 operators that used averages were then asked to provide information regarding the average weight of their passengers. The findings are of particular interest. The actual average weight of a passenger in the United States was now more close to 200 pounds, coming in at a total of 195.6 pounds, over 20 pounds more than what the crew of Flight 5481 were using. In 2002, Air Midwest had approved the use of these average weights in lieu of actual passenger weights. The new revised weight of Flight 5481 when adjusted for the weights of each passenger was now 17,700 pounds. Air Midwest Flight 5481 was overweight on takeoff. The incorrect weights used on the accident flight produced an incorrect center of gravity reading, whereas the actual center of gravity was further aft than the crew anticipated. An overweight plane on its own, however, should not have caused the crash, but once compounded by the limited range in the aircraft's elevator, the chance of a crash grew immeasurably, as the more heavier the tail end of the plane, the more nose-down movement may be needed on the elevator, of which the plane was now substantially limited to. Flight 5481 had a maximum airplane nose-down position of 7 degrees, however it was calculated after the crash that a position of 9 to 10 degrees of nose-down would have been needed for a controllable climb with these weights. They only had 7. We will now continue to discuss the events of January 8, 2003. The two members of the flight crew of Flight 5481 consisted of 25-year-old Captain Catherine Leslie and 27-year-old First Officer Jonathan Gibbs. Both flight crew members are barely starting out their commercial flying careers. Captain Leslie is of particular note. She is the youngest captain at the airline at the time. Both members of the crew were based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Flight 5481 would be their second flight of the day out of a total of four flights for the plane. They are preparing the plane for a 30 minute hop to the town of Greer, South Carolina for Greenville Spartanburg Airport. The plane left the gate at 8.30 in the morning and taxied out to runway 18 right. An extension to the airport means that this runway in the modern day is now runway 18 center. At 8.46, the tower clears flight 5481 for takeoff. The plane left the runway accelerating at just over 100 knots. Almost immediately after takeoff, the plane's nose begins to sharply rise. Trying to correct this, the crew try pushing forward on their control column to try and lower the plane's nose, however the plane is not responding. The adjustments made to the elevator controls two nights prior have meant that the crew do not have enough control over the elevator to push the plane's nose down, and so it continues to steeply rise to a dangerous angle. The aircraft pushes 50 degrees nose up, reaching a maximum of 54 degrees. The crew radio out a distress call to the tower as the stall warning sounds in the cockpit, meaning no lift is being generated by the wings. The plane slows before the nose then pitches down and begins an uncontrollable descent at just over 1100 feet of altitude. Flight 5481, just 35 seconds after takeoff, crashes into an on-site US Airways hangar at Charlotte Airport. The crash kills all 21 people on board the plane, as well as severely injuring another person on the ground. Following the accident, the NTSB gave some safety recommendations, including the need to more accurately calculate the weight of an aircraft and modification to the safety and maintenance manuals. The crash of Flight 5481 highlighted the need for air carriers to provide and communicate up-to-date and adequate information to pilots. Air Midwest, however, ceased operations in 2008. The Beechcraft 1900 continues to be a reliable plane to this day, although its popularity as an airliner has diminished considerably. Hello everyone and a big thank you for watching this video. I would just like to take this opportunity to once again thank my patrons. My patrons did get early access to this video, so if you want to be in with a chance to get new videos early and have your name featured at the end here, do consider joining my Patreon, links are provided below. Thanks to my £5 patron, KTP123, and a very big special thanks to my £10 patron, Cherub Cherub, you are awesome. Thanks so much as always. And that's it for me today. Have a great evening. Goodbye.